What does something like this mean for us NEO investors? NEO's cautious long-term approach should, seen as a, should be seen as a net positive uh, for shareholders, I think. While the company might not be making headlines with flashy uh, robo-taxi announcements today, they're laying the foundation for sustainable growth in the autonomous driving space. Their focus on high-quality semi-autonomous vehicles combined with their battery swapping network positions them to be a major player in the robo-taxi space when the time is right. Investors should also note that NEO's uh, autonomous driving software is designed to be updated OTA over the air, which means that vehicles sold today could potentially be transferred formed into robo taxis later on. This opens up the door for massive long-term revenue opportunities for the company, not just from selling cars, but also from autonomous driving services and mobility services. In the short term, Neo's strategy might be seen as quite conservative compared to players like Tesla, um, Baidu, or Waymo, but in the long run, it's about building a reliable, scalable business model. As the autonomous driving market matures, Neo will be in a prime position to capitalize on this trend that is robotaxi without rushing into an unproven market before it's ready. So while Neo isn't jumping into the robotaxi market just yet, their focus on developing uh, reliable autonomous technology for consumers today is a smart choice, I believe. By staying patient and refining their systems, Neo setting themselves up to be a major player in the autonomous driving space when the time is right. If you wanna be a part of the conversation before it happens here on YouTube, click that link in the description to join the free Courtside Financial Discord. What's going on everyone? My name's Obi and welcome back to Courtside Financial, the podcast where we talk about business and technology. We also talk a lot about the future of transportation and mobility. That's what we're going to be discussing in today's episode. It's going to be a super interesting, super insightful episode. We're going to be talking all about robo taxis. What does that mean for Neo? Where does Neo fit into this market and what is their perspective on this market? So it's going to be a super interesting video. Um, like I said, if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit the like button, the subscribe button, the notification bell icon, and leave a comment down below. Your engagement really does go a long way in helping out the channel, helping us to grow, helping us to reach a broader audience. And so without further ado, let's get into today's episode. Autonomous driving technology is no longer a far off concept. Companies like Waymo, Pony AI, and Baidu are already testing robo taxis on public roads. Several cities, particularly in, particularly in China, are ramping up their infrastructure to support these fully autonomous fleets of cars. Just look at what happens in places like Wuhan and Guangzhou. These cities are paving the way for large scale robo taxi operations. They're creating digital test zones and they've set ambitious goals goals to have tens of thousands of robo taxis on the streets within just a few years. Here's a big question for NEO investors. Where does NEO fit into this market? neo has been pretty strategic about its approach to autonomous drive. While they haven't rushed head first into the robo taxi market like some other uh, companies, they've been quietly laying the groundwork. With NEO Pilot and their advanced autonomous driving, uh, technology which is currently powered by NVIDIA or an X chips, Neo's building the kind of autonomous driving technology that could seamlessly fit into and power any robo taxi. However, Neo's focus so far has been on creating a premium user first experience. They're more focused on this rather than jumping into commercial commercial robo taxis. The company's uh, founder and CEO, Lee Bin, has emphasized the importance of high quality, safe, autonomous driving features for individual owners before expanding into their own fleet services. This cautious approach ensures that NEO's technology will be fully refined and tested before uh, scaling into the robo taxi market. Now let's talk about Neo's stance on robotaxis directly. In contrast to competitors like Baidu and Pony AI, uh, who Neo does have a stake in Pony AI through Neo Capital, by the way, Neo hasn't announced any immediate plans to launch their own robotaxi. And there's reason for that. Neo sees its foray into autonomous driving as more of a marathon, a marathon than a sprint. They're focused on mastering semi-autonomous driving features in their consumer vehicles before entering this high stakes game of robo taxis which is a capital intensive race in fact neo ceo again uh william lee lee bin 
has mentioned in several interviews that while autonomous driving is crucial for the future of mobility, he believes that the technology needs more time to mature, especially when it comes to safety. In my opinion, this strategic patience is actually quite smart. By allowing other companies to take on the heavy lifting of testing and early commercialization, Neo can observe what works and what doesn't. They can refine their technology, ensuring that when they do enter the robo-taxi market, they'll come in strong with a fully tested and reliable system. This approach serves in contrast to other competitors who are eager to push robo-taxis uh, into the market for public use, often before they get all the kinks worked out. For Neo, it's about building long-term trust with their customers by perfecting autonomous driving uh, features in the vehicles that they're selling today, such as the ET7 sedan and the ES6 SUV, before making any leaps into big fleets. So what does the future hold for Neo in the context of robotaxi? While we don't have a confirmed timeline for Neo's entry into the robotaxi space, the pieces seem to be falling in place behind the scenes. First off, NEO's NAD, NEO Autonomous Driving System, that's a huge part of their future roadmap. They've equipped their new vehicles with cutting edge hardware, including uh, multiple high resolution uh, cameras, radars, and LIDAR. This is tech that's going to uh, power full self-driving capabilities once the software eventually catches up. In theory, NEO could uh, easily pivot into offering their own robo-taxi services uh, if they do decide to enter the mobility as a service market. But for now, their focus remains on delivering a premium uh, autonomous driving service to individual consumers. And of course, we can't ignore the rollout of battery swapping in NEO's future potential robotaxi strategy. If NEO does decide to jump into this space, battery swapping could give them a huge edge over their competitors. Imagine a fleet of robotaxis that could quickly swap batteries and get back on the road in just a few minutes, reducing downtime and maximizing efficiency. It's the kind of innovation that could set NEO apart from the rest of the pack. Finally, while NEO might not be rushing into robo-taxis just at this moment, the company is certainly keeping an eye on the regulatory uh, developments in this space. In China, we've already seen several cities pass regulations allowing autonomous vehicles to operate commercially. And with China's push to be a global leader in autonomous driving, Neo's well positioned to capitalize on this trend when the time is right. So let's shift gears and talk about what does something like this mean for us Neo investors. Neo's cautious long-term approach should seen as a should be seen as a net positive. Uh, for shareholders, I think. While the company might not be making headlines with flashy uh, robo-taxi announcements today, they're laying the foundation for sustainable growth in the autonomous driving space. Their focus on high-quality, semi-autonomous vehicles combined with their battery swapping network positions them to be a major player in the robo-taxi space when the time is right. Investors should also note that NEO's uh, autonomous driving software is designed to be updated OTA over the air, which means that vehicles sold today could potentially be transferred formed into robo-taxis later on. This opens up the door for massive long-term revenue opportunities for the company, not just from selling cars, but also from autonomous driving services and mobility services. In the short term, Neo's strategy might be seen as quite conservative compared to players like Tesla, um, Baidu, or Waymo, but in the long run, it's about building a reliable, scalable business model. As the autonomous driving market matures, Neo will be in a prime position to capitalize on this trend that is robotaxi without rushing into an unproven market before it's ready. So while Neo isn't jumping into the robotaxi market just yet, their focus on developing a reliable autonomous technology for consumers today is a smart choice, I believe. By staying patient and refining their systems, Neo setting themselves up to be a major player in the autonomous driving space when the time is right. Anyways, that's it for this one. Thanks for tuning in to Quartzsite Financial. I hope you found all this information uh, valuable, useful, helpful, at the very least entertaining. If it was any of those things, make sure you hit the like button, make sure you hit the subscribe button, leave a comment down below, and uh, we'll catch you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.